Yep. Let us know about station this time on 79. Your dirty J Nix flies got it ready. As you know, man, you know I got my big dog checking in, Mr. Attorney Big Al. Let's talk about accidents, man. Traffic is crazy, crazy, crazy in Atlanta. What is the first thing you should do if you get into a car accident? Well, I mean, obviously, the first thing in any case is call the police out to the scene all the time. Um, I've seen so many cases go south when people don't call the police out to the scene. Number two, extremely important, take pictures of both cars. Uh, if you can take them as the cars came to rest after the accident, that's even better. But if you if the cars are moved, still take pictures of the damage to both cars always. Um, then what I would do is besides talking to the police officer and letting them know what happened in the accident, you keep your mouth shut, you call a lawyer. So you shouldn't say anything to the police officers. At, at, at you should. No, absolutely. You can tell the police officer what happened because if you don't, then they're going to have just the other person's version of the accident. So right. always, you can always talk to the police officer, but then when it comes to, uh, talking to insurance companies, calling about a rental car, those types of things, it's always best to hire the lawyer before you do any of those things. The main reason is, is that when you call and talk to the insurance company, they're going to record that conversation and they can use anything that you say in that conversation against you later. Mm. When your lawyer is talking to them, they can't use any of that information against you later. Mm. So it's very important not to give that recorded statement, not to tell them what happened in the accident. They will use anything that you say. They will try to use it against you later. And I can't tell you how many times in cases that I've had where the, my client has already talked to the insurance company, the insurance company will send me a copy of that recorded statement and say, for this reason, we're, we're putting some of the blame on your client because of what they said. So it's always important not to do that. And then once you do that, it, it's pretty much smooth sailing from there for you. You know, we, we want our clients to focus on getting their injuries better. Let us take care of the dirty work and deal with the insurance companies and, and their arguments and all of those types of things. Um, and we'll get it resolved for them. So you telling me like people, we pay all this money to insurance and they're supposed to be on our side, but they're really not on our side. They are 100% not on your side. They are on their side every time. If they can figure out a way. So the way that the claims process works at insurance companies, and, and I have an employee that was an insurance adjuster for years. The way that it works when a claim comes in, the first thing that the insurance company does is tries to determine if they can just deny that the policy covers that particular incident. So it could be because someone's driving a car that shouldn't be driving it. Um, it could be that you, you didn't make your last payment, whatever it is, but that's the first step. So when you make a claim, the first thing they look at is, can we deny this claim just saying that the policy doesn't apply to this accident for whatever reason? And so that tells you a lot that these insurance companies, even though they've been getting the premiums on this policy, they don't want to pay. And so that's why it's so difficult to get these cases resolved when you don't have a lawyer is because they'll use every trick in the book to not pay you. Wow. So let me ask you a question. Recently, I had a friend. She, um, she, she was driving and a gentleman actually hit the back of her car, ran in the back of her car, jumped out, said she, actually she was OK. Um, basically, it was a hit and run. What would you advise a client to do or any of the people that's in Atlanta that's, that's, that's listening to us to do if it's a hit and run? So actually, what you, before we got on this call, I was thinking if he asked me what I want to talk about, it's hit and runs. Mm. I got three calls for hit and runs yesterday. And so it's happening more and more and more. It's, it's gotten to the point where it's, it's almost unbelievable how often these hit and runs are happening. So the first thing is, is if you can get a picture of the tag, if you could possibly get a picture of the driver, you're in pretty good shape in these hit and runs. If not, you have to have uninsured motorist coverage. If you don't get, if you don't get that tag number off the car, the police, you know, when it comes to these hit and runs, like I said, they're happening all the time. Unless they're serious, serious injuries, the police put absolutely no effort in finding this vehicle. It, it would be too hard for them. Too much resources would be put into finding, you know, a car that, that did some damage to another car. So, it's one of those things where 
you've got to have that uninsured motorist coverage because these things are happening so often. It's, it's really, I would say that at this point, it could possibly be as many as one out of every five to 10 calls that I get. Wow. So that just tells you, and, and the first question I ask is, do you have that uninsured motorist coverage? And, you know, some of them go back and say, yes, I have it. And they are, they, they're in great shape. They have their car fixed, they have rental, they have their injuries paid for, they have all of that. If they don't have that uninsured motorist coverage, the road ends right there. Wow. So explain, uh, uh, explain that coverage, because I think some people think that if you get a premium, that it automatically comes with it. So does it automatically come with it or you have to actually ask the insurance company that? So when, when you get your insurance, like the, the insurance that the law requires you to have is what's called liability only. And that means that the only insurance that you have on your car is to protect the other person in case you're at fault for an accident. It covers you for absolutely nothing. There's no, under no circumstances, can you recover any money from your insurance company if you have liability only. That means you have liability only, you get into an accident, you hit someone from behind, your car's totaled, you don't get paid for that car. Mm. The car's jumped. Wow. And so, so that's just bare minimum liability coverage. Then there's some, there's some other coverages. There's collision and comprehensive, comprehensive collision will cover your car, the damage to your car, no matter how the accident happens, you could hit a deer, you could hit another car, you could, um, you could hit a car that doesn't have insurance and your collision will still cover the the value of your car. (laughs) Then there's uninsured motorist coverage. There's several other coverages that you can have. Uninsured motorist coverage is probably, besides for the liability coverage, the most important coverage you can have. Because there's so many times where no matter how good of a driver you are, someone could slam into the back of you and take off. Someone could could not have insurance and and then you're, you're just left holding the bag. Um, there are other coverages. Um, one thing that I always recommend to people is having rental coverage on their car. Um, that way your rental car is covered. If your, if your car gets, gets hit in, whether it's your fault or the other person's fault, um, you can still get rental while your car is going to be in shop. And it's a very cheap coverage to have. It's one of those things where I, you know, it's some, some insurance companies, it's, it's 20, $30 a year to have rental coverage. But that time when your car is in the shop for a month and you need that rental, it's good to have that because paying for a rental for a month could be difficult right. for a lot of people. So, um, so that's very important coverage to have also. So let me just ask you a question. Since you, you deal with this all the time, I know a lot of people ask me like, is gap insurance important? Like what's gap insurance for your car? So gap insurance is coverage that you typically get with your loan, with your car loan. They'll, they'll offer you gap coverage. It is a good thing to have. And the reason that I say that is, okay, so, so you go buy a car for $10,000. Right. The minute that you drive that car away, that car is not worth $10,000 anymore. Mm. You still owe $10,000 on it to the bank or you know, less your down payment, but that's still money that belongs to you. So that car is now worth less than $10,000. You get into an accident, that car is totaled, whether it's your fault or someone else's fault the insurance company that pays for the damage to your car is going to pay you the fair market value of that car. Wow. So you could owe $10,000 on it, but now it's only worth 9,000. And so this accident wasn't your fault, but now not only do you lose your car, but you now owe your finance company a thousand dollars. Wow. That the insurance didn't cover. So that's where gap comes in is gap takes care of that thousand dollars. And so now you don't owe that thousand dollars to your finance company. You're, you're square with that. So would you advise your clients to get gap insurance? Every time you get a car loan, you should get gap insurance. So let me ask you a question. So is, is it possible that say, like, for instance, like if you didn't get gap insurance, is there a way to get gap insurance after the fact? There typically is not a way to get gap insurance after the fact. Um, there are other ways if, if that type of thing happens and you don't have the gap insurance, there are some, some ways that you can, you can talk to your finance company as long as you've been making your payments on your car. And typically they'll roll that, 
negative equity that you have in your car, they'll roll that thousand dollars into the cost of another car and just put it in with the loan. So you don't have to come out of pocket and pay them the thousand dollars. Uh, so th that's one option that people have, but otherwise, if you don't have gap insurance, I mean, I've seen situations where people go to, you know, go to a, a, a car lot and they buy a car and they happen to buy it for way more than the car was worth. And then they get in an accident, they total it and they're, they're under on their car by five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. And so getting that gap coverage is very important. Well, thank you, Attorney Big Al, man. It's been a pleasure. That's Every fine. time we talk, you like you give me so much knowledge, man. So I definitely appreciate you. Um, Clark's going to call Attorney Big Al. one want to hurt. One, two, three. We definitely appreciate you, and we love you for everything you do for the city, bro. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.